and welcome to Finextra TV. I'm Angelica Malin, coming to you from Cybos 2023 in Toronto. Today we're talking about collaboration, connectivity and interoperability in the blockchain sector. Delighted to be joined by Sergei Nazarov from Chainlink. Sergei, thank you so much for joining me today. My pleasure, thank you for having me. So this is a particularly important Cybos for you as you've been working with some leading institutions like SWIFT, DTC and ANZ. Can you tell me a little bit about those collaborations? Sure, so we proved a number of very important things about how existing infrastructure can connect with blockchains efficiently. So using existing messaging standards from SWIFT, we were able to show how a number of different bank chains with the help of CSDs can connect uh, without any integration from the banks. So basically, banks will be able to go from having to integrate into thousands of chains to integrating into one system chain link which will link them to those thousands of chains through that one integration. So that's the first thing that we were able to show. The second thing was the ability for different bank chains to connect to each other, which is very important for their ability to have liquidity and transact. And so the second thing we showed is that private bank chains can interact with each other in a reliable, efficient way using CCIP, which is the cross-chain interoperability protocol, which is kind of like TCP IP, but for blockchains. And then the third thing that we showed was that private bank chains can connect to public chains very efficiently, also once again using CCIP. And that connection is also very important because I think there's a lot of demand and I think there's a lot of market activity that banks are want, going to want to be involved in on public chains. And I also think there's a lot of assets from banks that are going to be very useful to public chains. Um, for example, the real world assets they're all going to be making. So it actually proved that there's an ability to efficiently create connectivity and that that connectivity is very important for the liquidity between banks and for their ability to interact with public chains. Interoperability is something that's been spoken about a lot at Cybos. Why do you think interoperability specifically for blockchain is so important? I think banks, asset managers and CSDs um, are all realizing that A, there's not going to be a global blockchain for all financial transactions. That's simply not something blockchains can scale to do. And also their individual chains will not be the way that they transact with their counterparties. Those will be kind of like open databases where they can put assets or accept transactions or send transactions. So th the previous thesis was either there's going to be a big global chain or I'll make my own chain as a bank or an asset manager and the whole world will go on my chain. And neither of those things are realistic and I think they've now realized that. So the only world that's really left is that every bank, asset manager, CSD, everybody has their own chain, probably multiple chains. And in that world, all those different chains need to connect because if they stay siloed, then there's really no point of putting assets on them because the whole market will just be your chain. So there's a kind of big liquidity problem where if I launch my real world asset on my own bank chain, then the rest of the world won't have access to it unless there's an interoperability standard. And CCIP seeks and is becoming that interoperability standard across banks, asset managers, and CSDs so that they can properly transact with each other in a secure, efficient way and still be able to have their own chain, right? So in the, in the fragmented world of everyone has their own chain, being connected so that you, you can transact, have access to liquidity, there's a bigger market to access your assets, there's a bigger market for you to have access to is critical because the banking industry is about getting access to value, those transactions and liquidity. One of the big trends being discussed at Cybos is tokenization and the use of stable coins. How are you seeing this trend transform the financial industry and what unique benefits could it bring to end users? I think stable coins are a more, better, more efficient way for people to transact on chain because they are predictable and stable. So I think that's the transaction mechanism that's very widely used in public chains. And I think banks realize that it's a very widely used transaction mechanism in the capital markets that's, that's going to be even more widely used. And so I think every bank will end up having its own chain and even multiple chains and their own stable coin. And so all of the banks are now looking at making stable coins and making their own chains because it's a very basic uh, transactional kind of primitive that, that everyone will need to transact around their uh, specific bank's activity and that they will need to purchase assets from other places. Tokenization generally, I think, is getting kicked up into a whole new stage where you have these advanced tokens, real world asset tokens, that need to have data injected into them in order for them to come into existence and be valuable. So proof of reserves, price data, identity data, all this different type of data needs to be added to those tokens in order for them to become existing and usable. So that's what we kind of specialize in. We're the largest provider of proof of reserves. We're the largest provider of various types of financial data into all of these contracts. 
um, all of these different real world assets. And so what I'm seeing is that banks are realizing that they have historically been very good at making financial products out of real world assets. And now there's this trend of creating on-chain real world assets that people value at a premium. And so they want to be part of that trend and I think they'll have a very active role in creating some of the best real world assets. And initially those real world assets will be sold between them themselves, uh, initially on a regional basis. So like European banks with European banks and Asian banks with Asian banks, because the legal framework is only now appearing to do that. But eventually you'll have a big global internet of contracts where all the real world assets from the banks are both traded between each other across different regions and different geographies and public chains themselves are full of real world asset tokens from banks as a way to diversify the collateral backing those DeFi protocols. That's it. Well, thank you. So you're, you're a wealth of knowledge on blockchain. Thank you so much for joining me today for this conversation. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.